Note the intercrossing right arterial hepatic branch in figure 1, repeated as other figures in the series as well on purpose because it is really important. Self-explaining into a repeated as well on purpose. Hylum hit transversely, so-called Mickey Mouse aspect as aforementioned, right from patient's perspective, cystic duct and a CBD in 2B. No diagnosis in 2C in this sense, just a harmless finding. Self-explaining again, too, in figure 2D. Into E, a fine anatomy as well, indeed. In 3, a lowly symptomatic intrahepatic sludge is documented. An outer larger Y and a smaller inner Y as normal in figure 4A. The same in live US in figure 4B. Inner small Y corresponds with bile, outer bigger Y with portal system. And this is shown even once more since it is so important shown in 4C. In figure 4D, it is self-explaining again with color flow. A fine anatomy again in transverse sections in figure 5A. Self-explaining as well in 5B, including the pilar's live and harmless lymph nodes. Obturated metallic stand in figure 6a. In figure 6b, please note the somewhat distended cystic duct stump as sign of elevated tubular pressure. Here in 6c, the same is true for the intrapancreatic DHC portion pre-papillary. And in figure 6D, please note erubria and sludge. Slightly but significantly dilated DHC in 6E. The same holds true with figure 6F and its display in color flow. Even these stones in 6G and 6H are harbored without major G or even without any H, a duct distension. In these two tables in figures I and Y, a great number of different possible Shole Dohlathias cases is demonstrated. Unfortunately, further observation was not admitted by this patient in 6K. As seen in 6L, even Kolodoho lathiasis does not necessarily mean duct widening. In 7A, a distension of the pancreatic duct is visible shortly only as well as the tiny pancreatic tumor. The same situation, a biductal malignant stenosis, is seen in 7B. 
Figure 8 shows liver participation in Osler's disease, leading often to a cirrhosis-like feature. Left in Figure 9 shows undistended bilduct branches, while right half of the picture demonstrates significant signs of augmented tubular pressure. Wall thickening of DHC, in the end, it was due to a CCC coloniocellulary carcinoma. This figure 11, as well like this F, shows a marked thickening of the bile duct diameter. In rare cases, varices are even to be seen transcutaneously in ultrasound like in figure 12. These cases in figures 13a and 13b were taken as controlled scans one day after ultrasound guided liver puncture and they show DHC coagula. The same situation as seen before now in 13C with color flow. Please note in figure 14 left pancreatic calcifications and crotary form shape of DHC matching perfectly in ERP right half picture. In 15, bubbles float upwards after ESG according to gravitation. Note the movement bouncing after population in the right half picture in figure 16. These stones in figure 17 were overlooked first in clinical ultrasound. The same is seen in figure 18 in ERC. And the same is true in figure 19. This detail in figure 20A of a deep junction of the cystic and the hepatic duct was seen in clinical US as well, but not so in this case, in figure 20b, only ERC could show. Such small concretions, like in 21, without a shadow and without a DHC accumulation, are difficult. This CCC in figure 22 was easy to see for those knowing right branching of arteria hepatica. A really tiny pancreatic tumor is seen in figure 23. Wall thickening was enormous in this case in 24, in which the patient went with a T-stent after operation for one year deliberately. Typical aspect of hepatolysis in figure 25 in a case of mucoviscidosis. A CCC with beginning operation in figure 26 as well. Distension can be seen as well in transfer sections as figure 27 shows. Prepapillary symptomatic stone position in figure 28A. In 28B, in another case, stones were seen in ERC only. The same holds true in figure 28C in a third case. Double stenosis in figure 29, however, with the CCC on the left side, clinically much more important than the Merisi stones to the right. Different cases. Typical feature in clinical ultrasound in figure 30A for Merisi syndrome. As well, this is the case in figure 30B. 
and in figure 30c in a third case 2. And finally in a fourth case as well in figure 30d. In figure 30e in an ESE picture the typical situation of a Merici stone is displayed as well. Table 31 shows pictures in a longer standing big and probably shorter standing small stone. Video clip 32 nicely displays partial calcification or better reflexibility of a lymph node. Despite their appearance in ultrasound, all of these stones in figures 33 HG are asymptomatic. Bubbles 33B left were really good for discriminating this non perfused sludge masses from a malignancy. Again, so-called imaging gives a horrible picture in figure 30 through C, but no pain or symptoms at all. The same impression is true here in figure 33D as well. In 33E, however, impressive symptoms occurred both in history and in so-called imaging note, duodenal co-inflammation. In figure 33F, inflammation formed several wall layers. A fluid empty and stones containing gallbladder with intestinal fistula is seen in 33G. These sludge masses in 34 were asymptomatic again. This case in 35 was signaling a severe emphysematose acute inflammation with gas formations. In 36A, an abscess formation following a cholecystectomy nearly mimics a gallbladder. Following an acute pancreatitis, this bursaminor abscess in 36b was severely symptomatic as well. These masses in the preparillary colliderus in figure 37 did not cause any symptoms either. Impressive sludge masses in figure 38, however, are symptomatic as well. This was as well the case in figure 39. And this was the case as well in figure 40. These figures 41a to f show different cases of PSC, primary sclerosing cholangitis. They had in common pain-free patients, elevated enzymes, and different degrees of extra and intrahepatic wall thickening, and different degrees in lymph node involvement. For example, marked lymph adenopathy in 41D. Some example in case 41F required stenting as a bridging therapy before LTX. Different diseases here in figure 42, a long-standing PSC, give the same result, a liver cirrhosis. These are not only thrombosis, but perfused two more thrombi, as shown in bubble technology 
in figures 43 a to b in 43 c an indynamic clinic ultrasound this tumor thrombosis is hardly misinterpreted as focal lesion he changed all the medicine in his area by performing clinical us this i heard even before our personal meeting in the 90s in 45a this old lady from turkey falsely inspired at the moment of ptcd puncture she anyhow recovered and could be dismissed from hospital a laparoscopic cholecystectomy had been performed some days ago in figure 46a the same case in 46b as in 47a extracted shock thrombus in 47a this is the same case as in 47a here in 47b some days later clinically it was a dramatic course of this shocked patient with a shock code angiopathy he could be dismissed